I had a, a startup. It was a cybersecurity startup, and uh, soon after, I found uh, you know I met the founder of CypherCon uh, just by you know way of networking with people and stuff, and uh, we became really good friends. I, I had a podcast uh, at the time called uh, Seeking Truth, and, and that's really what drives me. You know, I really like to find out the truth of things. He, I had him on the podcast. He was like, "Hey, would you want to do the CypherCon podcast?" I'm like, "Yeah, that sounds like fun." Because uh, I get to meet cool people like him, hackers, um, you know, all these people that make up the, the CypherCon conference, which is a hacker conference. It's like, think like DEF CON, uh, a localized DEF CON. Welcome to AI Nerd, AI with Attitude. Today I'm joined by Kyle Puckhaber. He is the podcast host of CypherCon, where they talk about puzzles and nerdy stuff like this, which is great. Ciphers. He's going to define it for us, but first, Kyle, how are you doing uh, today? Oh, I'm doing lovely. Uh, how about you? You know, I'm in Georgia, and I think you're in Milwaukee, and uh, whenever I hear the word Milwaukee, I always think, you know, bark twice, you're in Milwaukee from Anchorman. I don't know if you've seen that. <laughs> you know, it's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, t yesterday we had this huge ice storm, and across the street from me, all of a sudden a transformer blew up. It was just, it was insane. It was just like there's this big fire at this like mini substation thing. I was like, what the hell is going on here? So everything's like a skating rink here in Milwaukee right now. Well, tell me a, a little bit about yourself, uh, the podcast, and maybe lead into the story of what, uh, how you got involved in the CypherCon uh, conference. So just. You, you have at it. Tell us about you a bit. So, yeah, I'm Kyle Pucaber, and uh, I've been doing the CypherCon podcast for, I don't know, a couple of years now. I got like 50 episodes or something like that. I got, I got into it. I had a, a startup. It was a cybersecurity startup. And uh, soon after, I found, uh, you know, I met the founder of CypherCon uh, just by, you know, way of networking with people and stuff. And uh, we became really good friends. I, I had a podcast uh, at the time called uh, Seeking Truth. And, and that's really what drives me, you know, I really like to find out the truth of things. He I had him on the podcast, he was like, hey, would you want to do the CypherCon podcast? I'm like, yeah, that sounds like fun. Because uh, I get to meet cool people like him, hackers, um, you know, all these people that make up the, the CypherCon conference, which is a hacker conference. It's like, think like DEF CON, uh, a localized DEF CON uh, type thing. So it's a conference about a thousand people attend uh, every year last two years it hasn't been going on but this year it's happening again april 28th uh through the 30th you know it, when you think about you come to the conference you're, during the week do, do or does the conference have anything fun like you have to solve puzzles around town oh yeah kind of like yeah there's yeah, there's all sorts of stuff like that so it's really cool to have a badge around here so the badges are interactive so they like they have like light up badges and stuff and so so what was it 2018 i think or 19 2019 the badge had like this ticker tape so you had to like go and find like you had to figure out stuff so there's like stuff around the conference and you had to answer like little riddles and questions and you had this ticker tape and you had to like type you know figure out what the answer is and you take it to this old like machine because like it's like the old cards for like programming i don't know if you've seen this before but you had like these little things they punch holes in it and whatever and, and then you'd, you'd run it through and then if it was right it was right and, and then you run it through your badge and uh, then you get like a little light up you got one of them right and so you kept doing this and like there is a lot of things that you had to do with other people and the badges would interact with each other and stuff and there's like all these little um, games within the game so the conference has like a number of different games within the conference itself so there's also like these CTFs these cash of the flag type uh, challenges too where you get to you get together so you, you could do the the CTF with like a group of people. Um, there's a lot of people that do these CTFs all over the place, but um, you, you just figure out you get points by doing certain things in the in the CTF and stuff like that. So there's all sorts of games and challenges and uh, like hidden things throughout the conference that really make it really interactive and, and, and interesting. More interesting than you know. Uh, I, I don't really come from the hacker world, so like I kind of like jumped into it and I was like, 
this is really cool, you know? So, so, so yeah, it's, it's really fun. I remember uh, trying to figure out the badge, and I was, like, standing with some other people, like, what do we do with this thing? And, and we sort of figured it out together, and it was a really cool way to be uh, engaged with a bunch of strangers that you're, like, all just trying to figure out the same thing. And it's, it's a lot of fun, so. It's always yeah. encouraging at a, at a hackathon to meet a bunch of random people from the Internet, just to... <laughs> it's it's great. It, it's it's a really cool thing. It's a really unique uh, a unique thing because yeah, you're right. There's like people that just live on the internet, right? And uh, actually coming together and seeing them in real life and, and interacting uh, in a personable way, you know, uh, is super cool. You know, we talked a little off camera, but you you like you like to discuss this I, this notion of consciousness and reality. Uh, I'd love to see you kind of blend that though with what you see because people who live online, if you decide. That's their reality to some degree, and right, and that's what their identity is. Is it real or not? And I maybe you know, as, as we, we were talking a little off camera, so I think tie it to that. Tell me how your opinion on this would be from this this notion of ciphers, puzzles, to you know, and those are things you do with your brain, and, and they're real to you. But then you know, you meet people in person. So tell me about maybe the your take on that, since this is a passion. Hmm. Yes. Yeah, that, no, that's that's really interesting. Uh, thanks for asking the question. So yeah, I, I think about consciousness as kind of like a base level of reality. That's kind of like my thing right now. It's just uh, exploring that concept of you know the idea that consciousness makes up all of this stuff rather than stuff making up this stuff rather than like reductive materialist uh, idea that you know there's there's things underneath all this and then underneath all that is just like consciousness and so. I think when you, when you talk about people living on the internet, I think that's really interesting too, because now you have this uh, the, this idea of like the metaverse, right? Coming, you know, where you have different universes on the internet, where you have a different avatar, and that's you, and, and you're interacting as this thing, and then it's like, you know, what what are you? And you, you know, you can talk about uploading your consciousness to the internet or something like that, living forever. And, you know, a lot of people talk about that kind of stuff too. And I think there's a lot of interesting stuff there. And what is real? And what is you? And what's the identity of you? Those are those are questions that I just find fascinating. I've always found them fascinating, uh, and I've always kind of been driving at that stuff. Like, why why are we here? What is this experience? And and so um, that I think is, is 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 really interesting. So then we talk about the internet and like bringing you know your your consciousness to the internet. Now, what is that? And uh, and I kind of feel like you know there could be layers and layers and layers of this thing. And you know if you if you think about, um, you know, the idea that we're in a simulation, that's a really popular idea right now. So we're in a simulation. Well, what's the other base layer reality, you know, before this one? And then now it's like we're making another one. So now we're making like all these other realities on the Internet. And it's just kind of like looping and looping. And, looping. and uh, you know, I kind of feel like it's a very fractal nature of the universe that it just keeps repeating itself but slightly different each time right and so uh that's that's kind of what i think about when <laughs> when you ask that question the matrix is real you know, it, it's uh, i think i think you're right you know i think you just taught described the first step toward the matrix <laughs> that was you just had this digital twin and you could be in universe a this universe b that and never leave your house but feel you know your mind is fulfilled to some degree, I guess. Or it's busy. It's busy. I don't know how I'd say fulfilled, but it certainly is busy, right? Uh, we have a lot of things that keep our minds busy, but I don't know if they're necessarily uh, fulfilled, you know? That's the thing I like about, you know, CypherCon too, is like all the puzzles and stuff. I think like figuring out puzzles, like that's, that to me is really fulfilling. Like once you're like, oh, I, I figured that out. Like I think that's one of the best feelings that there is. Shall we play a game? <laughs> what do you Nothing got? Like a Dar Nothing like a Daryl reference halfway through this. <laughs> what, what, actually, speaking of nerdies, you got to come up with something so I can stay in brand, even though ciphering is pretty nerdy. And I love puzzles. I'm a big fan of chess because I feel like it's always a puzzle every time you play. And, uh, you know, I love chess. You can, yeah. You, you a chess every game is different. Every every game is so every different. Every game. Right? I can, you know, I can get the first eight or nine to get something to a spot, and then it seems like right. eight moves later, I'm like, where, where did this go? How did that happen? Is a one point. There, there's a thing, uh, I forget what it's called, but there's the... Like somebody's written down like all the chess games that have ever happened, but then there's whenever there's a new move that hasn't ever happened, it's like a, a, everyone gets excited about it. I forget what the term is for it. You might know it. I don't know, but uh, I don't either. I just know I keep making uh, mistakes over. And yeah, over. yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, yeah. That's uh, but I think that's really cool because it's like it's so crazy just how much of all the games that have ever been tracked, and then there's still new moves that people are like, "That's a brand new move. That's pretty cool." So let's do a shameless plug for you. So tell me about who should come on your show for podcast. 
Uh, who should take you drinking and who should not? Who I want on the show is Bernardo Castro. He's, he's the next guy that I'm kind of targeting. Uh, he's, he's, he's the guy that I've been reading about this consciousness stuff, and I think he's got it right. So I'd love to have him on the show. And who should take me drinking? Elon Musk, I guess. Yeah, I mean, he, can buy, he definitely is boring. Just to be fair. Yeah. And if you go to cyphercon.com right now, there, there's some really cool puzzles and stuff on there. I don't know how many of them have come out completely. I know I, I got a little backstage pass and saw some of the things that are coming out, which are super cool, but they have, there is the mysterious cypher forest on there right now. So go check that out, cyphercon.com. I will. And, um, I do have a question on that though. What age group is it targeting? So this is like kind of any age and, and that's what's kind of cool because, um, you know, it could be anyone that's, you know, you're in middle school to, you know, you're 50 years old or whatever, you know, like it's, it's kind of fun for anyone really. But uh, I'm thinking, it's, it's I'm thinking good father son trip. My son loves, my yeah. ten year old loves puzzles and, and yeah. those types of things. One of his kid's friends was talking about how they got hacked and they're able to like use Wireshark and figure out who is like coming into the system. And he's like, you figured out all, all this from Hack for Kids? You did the Wireshark thing? And he was like 10 years old. So uh, it, it's super cool to see that these kids are actually getting really useful skills that they can apply and you know, they're figuring out how to, how to f like figure out what's happening with their parents' computer when it's not working right. So it's pretty cool. Tell me a little bit more about that. So let, let, on the kid's side, because I think that's an interesting piece, because that makes me think, hey, that'd be a fun trip with my kids, or at least one of them that likes to do this stuff, to take them up there, they got to meet some other kids that like this stuff, and they, we get to go around together solving puzzles all day. Um, hopefully they're dumbed down enough that someone like me can take it, and then my son can solve it. But um, tell me, like, what, during the interactions, like, what's the conference like? Is it just go up to booths and learn things? Is it... Yeah, so there's a lot of that. There's different villages. Like you could go to Hacking 101, and so that's what I did when I first went. I, I didn't know much about hacking, so like Hacking 101, you learn just all about like how packets of information get distributed in the internet. So you're like, okay, this comes in, this comes in, and then they give you like a scenario, like okay, figure out why this person can't log into their their system, and just by looking at the packets and the information, you're able to decipher that they're 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 putting their password in wrong. And like you can kind of figure out what the password actually is just by guessing. And, you know, kind of figuring, just figuring stuff out, right? And so they give you enough information, like at Hacking 101 to tell you, okay, here's like the base um, information you need, the skills that you need to understand the, the rest of the stuff. But then once you get to the other stuff, you have to like, just kind of figure things out and, and tr trial and error and, and um, you know, that type of thing. And then there's like other villages, like there's a, a VR village, you can like play around with some VR stuff. There's like an IoT village, so you can figure out how to hack into like some of these IoT devices and stuff like that. There's like a village, uh, a key, a lock picking village, so just like well, picking cool. locks. Yeah, it's, it's great. Yeah, so there's all that, and then there's like a bunch of people that speak and stuff, so like while all that's happening, there's speakers, there's a CTF going on, there's, you know, all of these different things that kind of make the conference really uh, unique and engaging in a really cool way. So. Awesome. I'm going to check that out. That might be a fun fun road trip. Well, yeah, road trip. Fly trip. I'm going to fly around a car. It'd be easier. Yeah. I'm actually excited to go do this and check it out. You know, thank you so much, by the way, for joining today. I, I, I'm going to check out the CypherCon uh, because puzzles and nerdy stuff like this is is really right in my sweet spot. If I come up there, I'll let you know. I will, uh, I'll take you out for a drink. We'll All right. That. Sounds good. I'll get you a pass to the conference, too. So. I hope you learned something today. Please subscribe and follow us on our social media pages.